All right, so we've got a, a quite a stack of sources here about kidney health. You've given me medical journals, yeah. holistic health tips, all sorts of things. Yeah. It's really got me kind of curious about these organs we don't think about too much. Right, kidneys. Yeah, most people don't don't really think about how important their kidneys are until, uh, well, uh, until there's a problem. Right. But they're like these silent guardians working tirelessly behind the scenes, mm. filtering your blood, impacting, you know, everything from your energy levels to your bone health. Yeah, it's like we're uncovering these hidden heroes, these vital organs. We just kind of take for granted until something goes wrong. Exactly. So before we get into the specifics of like cranberries and turmeric and all that good stuff. Okay. Paint me a picture here. Sure. Why are healthy kidneys so essential to just like feeling our best? Okay, so imagine this. Your kidneys are like these super powerful filtration systems, right? Right. They're constantly purifying your blood. And get this, every single minute, they're filtering about 125 milliliters of blood. Wow, that's that's a lot. Which, to put that into perspective, that's like filtering all the water in a standard bathtub every hour. Oh, wow. I had no idea it was that much. It's incredible. Your kidneys are working 24-7, filtering out waste products, excess fluids, toxins, really just making sure your body stays in balance. So, like, if I'm feeling sluggish or, like, my energy's just zapped, could my kidneys be playing a role in that? They definitely could be. See, kidney function, it impacts so much more than just removing waste. They actually regulate blood pressure. They balance the electrolytes that are vital for energy production. They even activate vitamin D, which we need for strong bones. Okay, that's uh, that's way more than I realized. Right. Okay, so let's let's unpack how these incredible filters actually work. I'll um, admit, medical terms, sometimes they make my head spin, so break it down for me in a way that makes sense. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. So. Picture your blood flowing through this network of tiny, intricate sieves called nephrons. Okay. And these nephrons, think of them like mini kidneys inside your kidney. Mini kidneys. Yeah. Each one meticulously sorts through your bloodstream, separating out the waste products and excess water. Hmm. Kind of like panning for gold. So the nephrons are like the gatekeepers, right. separating the gold, the good stuff our body needs from the waste. You got it. And that initial filtering process, that's just step one. There's more. Oh, yeah. Next, imagine like a water slide running alongside a line of, let's say, really thirsty workers. Right. OK. OK. The water represents the filtered fluid, which, you know, mm -hmm. still has some valuable nutrients in it. And as it flows along this slide, which is actually a tiny tube called the tubule. OK. The workers who represent the cells in your blood vessels, they reach out and reabsorb almost all the water and the essential nutrients. Wow, so nothing precious gets lost. Exactly, that's the idea. So the nephrons filter and then this intricate system of tubules and blood vessels make sure the good stuff is reclaimed. Exactly. What happens to the waste then? Anything left over, any remaining waste products that didn't get caught in that initial filtration, that gets dumped into the tubule, uh -huh. like a final sweep to catch anything your body doesn't need. And this process is called secretion? And it makes sure that only the truly essential components remain in your bloodstream. Wow, that is so much more complex than I ever imagined. It's pretty amazing. And to think, we have about a million of these microscopic filtration units in each kidney. It really makes you appreciate the incredible efficiency of our bodies. It really does. And all the more reason to give them the care they deserve, which is where I think all these sources you have come in. Right. So we've got Dr. Frieda's take on kidney-boosting fruits, Rain Country's more holistic approach. Yeah. And from what I gathered, cranberries seem to be a recurring theme. Yeah, they are. Both sources mentioned their benefits for preventing UTIs. Absolutely. So let's let's dig into that. Okay. What is it about cranberries that makes them like the urinary tract's best friend? Well, it's not just an old wives' tale. Okay. Cranberries have these unique compounds called proanthocyanidins. Proantho. Proanthocyanidins. Okay, we'll work on that. But basically, they have powerful anti-adhesion properties. Anti-adhesion. Tell me more. I'm all about learning these ins insider terms. Okay, so think of it this way. Proanthocyanidins, they prevent bacteria, especially E. coli, from clinging to the walls of your urinary tract. Oh, interesting. It's like making the surfaces too slippery for the bacteria to stick. Ah, so it's like what? a natural defense system for our urinary tract. Exactly. Okay, I'm starting to see why you were so excited about these deep dives. Yeah. There's always something new to discover. Always. Speaking of discoveries, let's talk about those other kidney-friendly fruits Dr. Frida mentioned. Okay, so cranberries are like little ninjas fighting off those UTIs. I like that, yeah. But Dr. Frida also highlighted 
watermelon and lemons right. as, as kidly superstars. Yeah. What is it about them that makes them stand out? Well, with watermelon, it's really about hydration power. Okay. And remember how we talked about how much fluid your kidneys are processing constantly? Right, right. Staying properly hydrated is so important. Okay. And watermelon, I mean, it's over 90% water. It's true. So it's like a tall glass of water for your kidneys, you know, helping them function at their best. Makes sense. What about lemons? Are they just for lemonade lovers? Well, they are great in lemonade. They are. But they actually pack a double punch for your kidneys. Oh. First of all, the citric acid in lemons can help prevent the formation of kidney stones. Oh, those are no joke, I've heard. Yeah, they're painful. Yeah, how does citric acid help with that? Well, it basically increases the acidity of your urine, which might sound kind of strange. Oh. But what it does is it creates an environment where those minerals are less likely to crystallize and clump together you know, to form those stones. So it's like a preventative measure. Exactly. Makes the kidneys job a little easier. Exactly. It's like giving your kidneys a break. I like it. So squeezing a little lemon in my water is a win-win then. Exactly. Good for taste, good for the kidneys. Okay, I can get behind that. So we've talked about fruits. Okay. But rain country also emphasized exercise, which seems to be good for just about everything. Right. Movement is medicine. But how does exercise help our kidneys specifically? Well... When you exercise, you're boosting your blood circulation throughout your whole body. Right. And that includes your kidneys. Makes sense. And that improved blood flow, it helps deliver oxygen, nutrients, and it also helps efficiently carry away waste products. So it's like giving our kidneys a little massage from the inside out. Exactly. I like it. And, you know, beyond those immediate benefits, regular exercise helps manage blood pressure. It reduces the risk of things like diabetes, which in the long run, those can really impact kidney health. Right, it's all connected. It is. Speaking of connections, Rain Country also touched on a more holistic approach. Yes. Things like stress management and herbs and I don't know, it's like my grandma's garden analogy comes to mind. Okay. There's so many possibilities, but it can be overwhelming to know where to start. It definitely can be. Yeah, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So let's break it down. Okay. What are some of the top contenders in the herb world for kidney support? Well, let's start with one that's often dismissed as a weed. Okay. Dandelion. Yeah. Dandelion is actually a powerhouse for kidney support. Mm. It acts as a natural diuretic. Bam. So it gently encourages your body to flush out excess fluids, which can be really helpful for kidney function. So it's like a little nudge for our kidneys. Exactly. Help them do what they do best. Exactly. Get about nettle. That one always kind of gets a bad rap because of the sting. Right, right. Don't judge a book by its cover, right? Right, exactly. Nettle has actually been used for centuries for kidney and urinary tract support. Mm. It's thought to also have diuretic properties and potentially even helps reduce inflammation. Okay, so nettle is moving up on my list. It's worth looking into. It is. It's fascinating how these plants have these properties that can be so beneficial. Yeah, nature is amazing. It is. What about turmeric? Turmeric seems to be everywhere these days. Mm. Yeah, turmeric is very popular and for good reason. For good reason, yeah. What's its claim to fame for kidney health? Well, turmeric contains curcumin, okay, which is a really potent anti-inflammatory compound. I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, and it's getting a lot of attention in the scientific community. Hmm. And while more research is definitely needed specifically on kidney health, okay. some studies suggest that curcumin may help protect against kidney damage. Interesting. Yeah. It's pretty promising. So adding a dash of turmeric to our meals could be a tasty way to give our kidneys some love. It's a delicious way for sure. Right. And it's a great way to just incorporate more anti-inflammatory foods in your diet in general. Which is good for everything. Exactly. It's all connected. Right. I'm sensing a theme here. What's that? It's not about finding that one magic solution. Okay. But it's really this multifaceted approach. I like how you put that. Diet, exercise, stress management, even exploring the benefits of these herbs. It's about creating a holistic lifestyle that really nourishes your body as a whole. I like it. And as a bonus, shows your kidneys some extra appreciation. Okay, so before we move on to our final takeaways, we need to address something that I think can be a little confusing. Okay, what's that? Potassium. Ah. Because I noticed what seemed like a little bit of a contradiction okay. between, you know, Dr. Frieda's praise for potassium rich fruits right and then rain country's caution against high potassium foods for people with existing kidney issues yeah that's a really important point so which is it is potassium our friend or foe well it's a great question and honestly like a lot of things in health the answer is mm -hmm. it depends 
Okay. For most people, potassium is an absolutely essential mineral. Okay. It's vital for regulating your heart rhythm, your muscle function, your fluid balance. Mm. Fruits like bananas, oranges, even our watermelon we talked about. Right. Those are excellent sources of potassium. Okay. And they're perfectly healthy for most people. But for someone with kidney issues, it's a different story. It can be, yeah. Okay. Because when your kidneys aren't functioning optimally, they might struggle to filter out that excess potassium from the blood. Okay. And that can lead to a condition called hyperkalemia. Hyper what? Hyperkalemia, which is basically just a fancy way of saying high potassium levels, okay. which can actually be dangerous. Oh, wow. And that's where Rain Country's caution comes in. Okay. If you have existing kidney issues. It's really crucial to work with your doctor or registered dietitian okay. to figure out what the appropriate amount of potassium is for you. So it's not about labeling potassium good or bad. Exactly. But understanding its role in the context of our individual health. You got it. Got it. It all comes back to, you know, personalized guidance. Absolutely. And form choices. Knowledge is power, right? It is. Well said. All right. So we've covered a lot of ground here. We have from cranberry ninjas to the potassium paradox. Exactly. Are you ready to kind of bring it all together with some key takeaways? I think so. I think our listeners are ready for some actionable advice. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so after that deep dive into the world of kidneys. If our listener walks away and only remembers like two or three things from all this info. Right. What are the most important takeaways? Well, I think the biggest takeaway is, you know, taking care of your kidneys doesn't have to be this big overwhelming thing. Right. It's really about those small sustainable changes that you can make in your daily life. Right. Little tweaks. Exactly. That add up over time. So where do we start? What's one thing our listener can do like today? Well, I think it starts with hydration. Okay. How about swapping out that sugary soda mm -hmm. for a refreshing glass of water more often? Love it. You can even try infusing your water Ooh. with some lemon, some cucumber. Oh, that sounds nice. Right. Yeah. Makes it a little more interesting. Yeah, it's amazing how those little things can make a difference. Absolutely. What about what about food? Well, we talked about all those kidney friendly fruits and veggies. Right. How about starting your day with a bowl of blueberries? Yeah. You know, full of antioxidants. Okay. Add some crunchy red bell peppers to your salad at lunch. Okay. Or have some roasted asparagus with dinner. Oh. I mean, the possibilities are really endless. I like it, those pops of color. Exactly. And, you know, and don't forget about movement. Oh, right. Exercise. Exactly. You don't have to become a marathon runner. Right. Just a brisk walk around the block, yeah. some gentle stretching. Sure. Those can do wonders for your circulation and, by extension, your kidneys. Right. Finding those little ways to move our bodies. Exactly. Even on those busy days. Even on the busiest of days. Okay. So we've got hydration. We've got food. We've got moving our bodies. Yeah. And I think the final thing is, you know, remember, knowledge is power. Right. Understanding how your kidneys work, what okay. can impact them. That empowers you to make the best decisions for your health. I love that. So we're wrapping up our deep dive on these amazing kidneys. But I always like to leave our listeners with something to ponder. Okay. I like it. So here's your thought-provoking question for today. What is one thing? Okay. One simple adjustment. You can make starting today to show your kidneys a little extra love. I love that because it really emphasizes that we have the power to make a difference. We do, one step at a time. Absolutely. And on that note, we'll wrap up our deep dive into the incredible world of kidney health. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Remember everyone, those kidneys are working hard for you 24 seven, so show them some love and they'll keep you feeling your best for years to come. Well said. Until next time, stay curious everyone. And keep exploring.